Okay, so to combat that hard drive lag, which I just demoed for you guys in the Call of Duty Cold War, I decided to purchase one of these uh, fastest M.2 NVMe drives that I could find on the market. So I was checking out different reviews and graphs, and I decided to purchase the Western Digital Black SNA50. It's not the newest M.2 drive, I think it was released somewhere around late 2020, so a bit over one year ago. But in the actual like reviews, it has been doing very, very well on par with the uh, Seagate Fire CUDA 530 and some of the other models from other vendors like and so on. So uh, it's definitely still one of the fastest NVMe drives you can find on the market. It's a Gen 4 NVMe, so it's pretty much limited by the uh, uh, Gen PCI Express bandwidth. So this is rated at 7000 megabytes per second with a very nice IOPS value. So uh, one of the main reasons why I went, went with this drive is the price. I was able to find it somewhere between 170 and 190 euros here in Finland. So I did purchase this drive myself. The main competitor which I was looking at was the Seagate Fire CUDA 530. The one terabyte model is somewhere around 200 something, like 210, 220, 230. The two terabyte drive would be probably the most interesting option if you are planning like an M.2 drive filled with different games you really want to play with good detail or if you want a drive for like Photoshop, video rendering software and so on. So the two terabyte model would probably be the most interesting option. I think it was somewhere between like 400 and 500 euros. So the two terabyte is still quite expensive even with the WD Black SNA50. I think you are looking somewhere around 400 euros at least for the two terabyte model. Not sure on the exact price of the SNA50, but still it's quite expensive. So many people can't afford the two terabyte or even the four terabyte model. So uh, let's check out this drive very quickly. Uh, I, I just want to share like my own personal like opinion about like what would be a very nice setup for many of you guys. So uh, Gen 4, so uh, you need a Z590 or Z690 to get the most out of this uh, drive or the AM4, so the latest Ryzen CPUs from AMD. So uh, I have been using, uh, I still have been using the SR3 Dark with the 28 core Xeon from EVGA quite a lot, even in uh, daily style situations. So with the SR3 Dark, I cannot get the most out of this drive because it's only PCI Express Gen 3, but obviously it's still tremendously faster than any regular hard drive or, or normal SSD. So we can still even try this drive with the SR3 Dark. Up to 7000 megabytes read, 1 million IOPS, compatibility for desktop PC or a laptop. So let's quickly open up this drive. So that's the drive itself. No heatsink with this uh, particular model. I do have some uh, custom heatsink myself still somewhere and I think actually uh, Bart from Poland he creates a very nice uh, custom heatsink for NVMe M.2 drives so you can get a separate one if you uh, didn't purchase the heatsink included model already or, uh, from the store. I think that's the regular length one it's the same as my current one so it should fit in uh, most of the cases or the motherboards so it shouldn't cause any issues. So uh, my own opinion about these drives is, so for example in my uh, daily PC or the daily system, I've been using uh, an NVMe M.2 drive for four years already. I have just a 256 gigabyte model and that's my uh, boot drive, so the C drive where the operating system is. In my use, like what I've experienced this far with uh, operating systems and so on, I really want to keep the C drive as small as possible. It can happen, trust me, if you change parts around and you use the same operating system, it can happen that uh, your operating system, so the Windows installation, gets corrupted and you can fix it. I've seen it so many times already that uh, I get the, uh, I just get some kind of blue screen and I cannot recover the windows that easily with the uh, boot repair options. Luckily this far the windows recovery thingy has been working just well but I've had a lot of different issues with the operating system. Some, some moment I actually lost the sound completely and that's definitely you don't want to face. So uh, if the C drive is as small as possible, if it doesn't have anything you absolutely need, 
other than the operating system itself, there's not that much damage if you actually have to reinstall the operating system. But if you store a lot of different things on top of the operating system, on the C drive, like games, important files, and so on and so on, then you obviously you don't want to reinstall the operating system if it's not like absolutely needed. So that's why it's best to save all of the important things you want to keep on some other drive. So uh, what I would do is I would use some small NVMe drive as the main like boot drive. So the uh, C drive for Windows and so on. It can be like 256 gigabyte or just a 500 gigabyte M.2 NVMe SSD. And then you can buy a one terabyte or two terabyte or even a four terabyte depending uh, on your budget where you can store most of the important games on which you want to get the book the best possible performance on, like what I demoed, Call of Duty, Cold War, or some other game, or you want some, uh, like all of the important software, like Photoshop, video rendering programs, and so on, then you can use a separate drive for those. And it can be, well, it depends on the on your budget, because the prices range from 150 euros-ish from the one terabyte model and the four terabyte, I think it's all already somewhere around 1000. So they are very expensive and many people can't afford these uh, very fast drives. But anyways, so let's uh, try this. I will actually, uh, I want to demo this on uh, in the same game. I want to demo this probably on the SR3 Dark, even though it doesn't support Gen 4. So you need, as I said, you need Z590 or later platform from Intel or the latest Ryzen CPU from AMD if you want to get the most out of this uh, NVMe drive. So very interesting drive, so definitely will be uh, interesting to test this one and I will actually use this for uh, benchmarking purposes as well. So I will uh, actually, the first thing I'll uh, do with this drive is I will uh, use it as the bench drive for my uh, Z690 extreme overclocking tests on LN2, so Windows 10 and maybe Windows 11, just in 2D tests and so on, and I can also do some 3D on this later. So it, it so it's not only just for daily drive for games and important programs, I will also use it for benchmarking or testing purposes. So uh, now I'll just uh, move this back to uh, the capture card view and let's see how fast this actually performs. Okay, so I've been using the uh, M.2 drive in some various daily situations for some time now. I actually filmed the unboxing part of this video like over a month ago, just before my latest LN2 session. Now the uh, Black Ops Cold War has been like one of the only games that I've actually been playing over the last few months because I just haven't had that much spare time, so I haven't been playing video games that much overall. And... Uh, the Black Ops Cold War has been quite easily accessible on Battle.net, so I've been playing it whenever I've had some very spare time. That very specific issue, which I demonstrated at the start of this video, has really been getting on my nerves. So I really wanted to see if I could fix it like for good. So I've been uh, looking for information on Google and on YouTube regarding that issue, but I couldn't really find any like real solution. The main information that I could find regarding tremendous lag in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War was mainly always about like internet connection related lag and not really uh, anything regarding my issue. Uh, up until now I've been uh, playing this game from a hard disk drive, so from a standard HDD. So as you can imagine it's pretty tremendous upgrade going from a standard hard disk drive to a high performance M.2 uh, NVMe drive. So uh, after I changed the drive, uh, it has made the game a lot more smooth and a lot more like playable in many ways. The loading screens are faster and uh, so on. So now I haven't faced those huge lag spikes as uh, often as before, but they still happen from time to time, just uh, not as often as before. So uh, that's why if any of you who are watching this video right now, if you have uh, faced this issue yourself and you know any better like proper solution on how to fix this issue, then I would be very willing to hear any of that information out. So uh, if you uh, 
know any better solution then feel free to drop a comment down below and I will definitely check it. So uh, I think the uh, overall experience with this uh, Western Digital SN850 has been very good. The loading screens are very fast. The uh, overall feeling has been very very smooth. And I think they are pretty affordable nowadays. The At least the one terabyte drives, I think they are pretty affordable. So definitely worth it to uh, invest some money uh, in a drive like this if you have let's say like a high performance uh, gaming PC if you have let's say like a core i9 CPU and one of the highest end uh, graphics cards that you which you can get at, uh, at the moment uh, then it's definitely worth it to purchase uh, one of these drives but if you still face uh, these issues even with a with an M.2 drive like this some other things that you may try can be uh, like getting a high refresh rate monitor when I changed the refresh rate on my monitor from 60 Hz to 280 Hz, it did make the overall experience a lot more smooth. I'm still running that very same Asus 1080p monitor, which I already covered on my channel, and it has a factory overclock of 280 Hz. And if you run any of the latest RTX series of graphics cards from Nvidia, I really recommend you enable the resizable bar function. It's quite old news already, but uh, if you still haven't enabled it, I really recommend you do, as, I, as it did help me by quite a bit. And if you run a graphics card made by EVGA, it's very easy to find the corresponding resizable bar bars for your uh, uh, specific graphics card model, as long as it's uh, an RTX uh, series graphics card but yeah so uh, that's pretty much it I guess so uh, I think I think this was a great purchase even uh, if I couldn't fix the, uh, this issue like completely but uh, again if you know any better solution then definitely I would be willing to hear that out but uh, it's also possible that this issue isn't fully uh, like hardware related it could be like partially in in the game in itself so uh, to get rid of this issue like for good it could require like a big up uh, like a big update from the uh, creators of this game so it's completely possible the only minus which i encountered with these uh, m.2 drives is the heat so if you really stress these uh, m.2 drives a lot they do get pretty warm quite fast so many people uh, recommend to purchase the heatsink versions of the m.2 drives i think it's like a good advice but uh, there's no point to pay overly much for the heatsink uh, version and if they are like completely out of stock there's no point to wait a tremendous out of time tremendous amount of time for the uh, heatsink version to become uh, available you can find very high quality custom heatsinks for these m.2 drives for quite cheap i actually purchased a custom heatsink for these M.2 drives from uh, Barks like two days ago and it only cost 13 euros. I'm, I will be getting it uh, next week I think so I will definitely cover it on my channel so stay tuned but uh, I just wanted to mention that as well so you can get like proper heatsink for these M.2 drives uh, if needed. You are not limited to just heatsink only versions from these uh, uh, storage manufacturers so don't worry but yeah, so uh, if you like to see this uh, video, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching a little bit different video this time. And I will see you on the next one.